Go to shipstation.com forward slash forge for a 60 day free trial from today's sponsor. Welcome back to part two of me trying to recreate from scratch my very own handmade Zippo style lighter. The learning so far has been abundant. We are really getting a feel for what it must have been like to manufacture and prototype one of these in the 30s. We finished off the last video getting our pattern cut out and I'm pretty sure it's now on to making the chimney bends. The first bends we're gonna make are these chimney and pivot bends. On the flattened out version, you can see where some of the old bends were. So we've transferred some marks and we'll be able to start bending. So I just tried making this interior bend here on my piece and I thought to access it, I would need to bend this lip up first. Unfortunately, however, that's had a really negative effect. I've actually created a very, very small tear in this corner. I'm not going to give up yet, because that tear may not become too much of an issue, but I obviously can't continue doing the bend like that. I'm thinking maybe a little bit of a rubber mat, put this piece on, and then hit it here. That works fairly well, actually. <laughs> maybe I can finish it with pliers. Now we're getting somewhere. On this bend, it's not a 90 degree bend or a sharp bend, it's actually a radius. So I'm just gonna inch my way around here just a few millimeters at a time to get the curve of the chimney. Incredibly, I think this is looking just like a Zippo lighter. The chimneys have been formed and it is now time to do the terrifying and create our interior bend. If I do not line everything up perfectly side to side in our die, if I do not line this up perfectly, if it's twisted, I will ruin, just completely ruin, all the work that's gone into hand making this. As we found in the last episode, the use of a magnet helps us keep everything aligned and square. Nothing to it but to do it. Ah! It's lined up. Forming the zipper lighter in three, two, one, zip. Ah! I'm a little nervous about how even this is going. Come on. Don't fail me now. Oh, I think we might have done it. That looks a decent bit like the inner Zippo lighter case. I can't believe it. That is really quite similar to the real thing. Will it fit inside the case? Oh. So as you can see, this is sprung open and we need it to be locked closed. On the original, it is spot welded. Now my welder's actually got quite a clear complexion, so we're not gonna be able to use it. And I think one of the only feasible options is to try silver soldering it. Jamie, do you have anything you'd like to say? <laughs> Jamie, it's okay, because there's a very good chance it didn't work, so I'll have to do the whole thing again. So what we're trying to do is solder it with the contents of this syringe. This is silver solder mixed with a little bit of flux. It's in suspension in a paste, and it's for jewelry stuff. So you heat up the material, the silver solder eventually gets to the point that it melts, runs, and then sticks the two pieces of steel together. That's the hope, but there's a very good chance it's not actually gonna work. We'll find out if that's the case now. It's actually kind of worked. All right, now let's see if we break it apart. Yep, I think that's probably strong enough for a Zippo lighter. So now I know that if my Zippo lighter is thrown out of a plane in the mountains of California for a YouTube video, it will probably maybe fail near the solder. All right, so it's onto the real one here. If this opens up, I'm gonna be very disappointed. And oh my goodness. Hey, hey, hey! That's a soldered up hot case. So now that it's soldered together, it's time to even it up to make sure it matches. You can see this little ear here, compared to this little ear, there's a difference in height. The chimney could do with truing up and also clean up the level on the bottom. So a little bit of file work, a little bit of work with the diamond hone. In addition to that, we're also going to work on the pivot holes, make sure they line up straight through. They're a millimeter undersized. We've got tons of leeway to bodge our way into accuracy. So here's where we are so far. We now need to make this little plate that'll fit inside. I got the top plate fitting in nicely. It's looking pretty clean and I don't know what I'm gonna do next. 
but you will soon find out. So you remember from the last episode, inside the Zippo are a number of other small components made out of brass. We have this, which is the flint holding, spring holding tube. We have a screw and we have a little pusher as well as a spring. Well, our brass has just arrived and I think it's about time for us to make these components because they need to be installed either before, at the same time, or after installing that top plate. Now they do say a small lathe can't make big parts, but a big lathe can make small parts. But this is pushing it. This is a bit of five mil round in a lathe that could support an 18 inch diameter piece. So as it stands now, the brass components are done. One of them has been riveted in. That has the hole for the wick. This one here is gonna be a press fit. But what we've now gotta work out is how we assemble the top plate to the case itself. As you remember in the last episode, the original Zippo was glued in place. But I'm looking at this and the relatively acceptable fit up that I've done, and I'm thinking it would be really cool to solder it. But it is going to oxidize all of this and make it near impossible to clean up. I'm leaning to soldering regardless of it tarnishing it, and even if it does tarnish it, there's a good chance it's gonna look awesome. Of the Titanic. Yeah, it looks a bit crap, doesn't it? I might have uh, ruined this entire thing. Jamie, can you imagine if I just destroyed this? <laughs> what have I done? Oh, frick. When I said it was going to be tarnished, I was thinking like a little bit of light oxidation. I wasn't thinking it just got pulled out of a burning building and dumped in seawater. That may be so bad that it's impossible to clean. So I put all that flux on there thinking that would stop it from oxidizing. It clearly made it 10 times worse. I don't even know if the solder ran and it's really not looking like it. It's a bit of a wonder how like such a giant company like Zippo don't solder them and they have to just glue them. I wonder why. Yeah, I know why. It's because gluing is the best and super glue is so cool. I can't wait to super glue mine together. You know, here in Old Blighty, they say when life gives you lemons, make tea. Some say if you look in a mirror and say a cup of tea three times, common fuzz appears. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, please do not put milk in it. Why? <laughs> it's <just> disgusting. <laughs> You're making a potion. Thank goodness for Scotch Bright, my saviour. I'm using a little baking soda here in the hopes that that solidifies the super glue a little bit faster, makes it a little thicker. I don't know if it's gonna work. Bloody hell, nothing has dripped out. That is a miracle. All right, it's the next morning and the super glue has set to the paper towel as well. And so clean up on this project is just seeming to be never ending. Ah, oh, yeah, 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 this is just silly. Come on. With this done, it's now time for some of the small and dainty components. And I think the best thing to tackle first is the spring, because I think that has an inner diameter that's more likely to fluctuate than the outside diameter of the little pegs that sit inside it. So with that in mind, we're gonna start with the spring. And you might be wondering, Alec, start with the spring? This teeny weeny little spring? Yes, I wanna see if I can make that thing. We've got a lathe, we've got a big cardboard tube, and in that tube, we have some wire. This is 20 thousandths of an inch diameter music wire, which is wire that is supposedly spring steel, 
and we'll be able to make a spring from. So we're gonna pull this apart and get some measurements. How does that come off? Ooh, that's so interesting. A little tapered plug, reading 1.3 millimeters on the ID. So because I only have an M3 tap, on my flint barrel here, it's an M3 threaded hole, which isn't the exact same as on an actual zipper. So the fit here is actually quite tight. So we are gonna try and reduce the actual diameter of this by 0.1, 0.2 millimeters. Now I think I'm going to refresh my memory with YouTube's machining godfather, this old Tony. Well, that'll do perfect. So you see that bar he was wrapping that spring around? In our spring, it's this. That ain't gonna work. <laughs> it's not gonna work, is it, Jamie? So I think we've at least got to start by trying to put this in the lathe. That's a problem. I think a pencil can help us. I don't even have a chuck that can hold the drill bit. So with the use of a pencil, a little bit of brass in the chuck, and a little jeweler's clamp, we are set up, and I think we're ready to make the spring. When we look at the spring, we know it has a 0.75 millimeter pitch between each wrap, and this is now the moment of truth. All right, so we're gonna start by hand, just see if we can get the first wraps started. Ah, great, it's already not working. All right, so we have the little bit of wire that we're gonna wrap around centered on this bronze bar. We then have the actual music wire offset. We've got two bolts as well as a little bit of super glue holding it in together. In the chuck over here is a brass bar with just a plain hole in it. And here is our little feeder flute. This will allow us to use the threading function of the lathe. When you thread on the lathe, it goes this way, but I need it to go that way, so that might be a challenge. Anyway, we're gonna see if this works. Yes. I think it's feeding. That is just so cool. Hopefully, we have made a correct diameter, length, and strength of spring. So here's ours. It is certainly not identical at all, but it's pretty close. I wasn't able to use the um, thread cutting feed on the lathe, because to engage it, I would have had to turn on and spin the lathe, which would have started wrapping the spring. So a better order of operations could have allowed for that, but I'm fairly happy with how this is going, and if it works, I'm gonna be even more thrilled. <laughs> Time to make the little screw and the pusher. Unfortunately, I'm a little bit concerned that our spring might be too long. But that's okay, because we have scissors. So we can always cut the spring down. We are making progress. Just realized I messed something up. Ah, I was just about to tell the camera what my next step was, and I was looking at my pieces here. Do you remember, Jamie, this spring that holds the little lever that opens and shuts the zipper? That was meant to be riveted onto this top case with that little brass rivet that's already in. So. We're gonna have to do some, some, some kerfuffling to work that out. But unfortunately, that kerfuffling is gonna have to wait till the next episode. And we've gotta thank our sponsor, which is ShipStation. It is the world's number one web-based e-commerce shipping software. And we absolutely love it. the Alex Steel Co., which is our company that's in Montana that sells blacksmithing and bladesmithing equipment. We ship absolutely everything with ShipStation. We completely and totally rely on it because our expenses would be way higher if it wasn't for the time savings as well as cost savings on shipping. The cost savings are because when you're a ShipStation member, you have access to the type of shipping rates that usually only fall 
Fortune 500 companies can get. It's incredibly practical because you can choose from countless carriers and you'll never have to go to the post office again because on the platform you can schedule a USPS pickup. It entirely eliminates ever needing to copy and paste addresses and orders and risk errors again because it syncs directly to your website building platform or e-commerce selling location. Your orders will populate directly into your ShipStation account where with the use of their powerful automations you can turn shipping into a one-click operation. No matter whether you're shipping out 10 parcels a month or 10,000 parcels a month, you're going to find massive cost and time savings using ShipStation and you can get it synced to your website and start shipping in less than an hour. And if you want to try ShipStation for free for 60 days, you can simply go to ShipStation.com forward slash forge. It'll be free for 60 days. You'll see how much time and money it'll save you and it'll support the channel while you do it. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to ShipStation for sponsoring this. Check them out down below.